Could this be the new national flag of Australia? Australia was the last inhabited continent to be discovered by Europeans and has only existed as an independent nation for just over a century. But even in that short time, Australia and its people have become a unique and easily recognised part of the global community of the 21st century. The Australian flag, however, has not. The flag's blue ensign design places the Union Jack of the United Kingdom in the canton, the upper quarter of the flag on the hoist side. This gives the Union Jack privileged ascendancy in the part of the flag highest above the ground when the flag is hoisted at an angle or not flying. Far from being unique, this same flag design was shamelessly readapted by the former British Empire to produce the flags of its overseas colonies, no fewer than 66 times to be exact. But the former British Empire has since dissolved, and most of its former colonies are now independent nation-states, which have adopted their own unique national flags, some of which are among the most iconic and easily recognised in the world, including Canada, South Africa, Seychelles, and many others. Why then is Australia among the handful of nations yet to change its colonial flag? While our government remains a constitutional monarchy, that still makes Australia no more subordinate to the UK than Canada is, for instance, and certainly no less independent. Of course, Australia would not be where it is today without British involvement, but given that the British ensign is still used as the flag of Britain's remaining overseas territories, it seems inappropriate for the same flag design to be the international symbol of an entirely separate nation, yet alone the 13th largest economy in the world. People born overseas make up over a quarter of the Australian population, and nearly half of all Australians have at least one parent born in another country. As a clear symbol of subservience to Britain and Britain alone, the current flag fails to recognise anyone who is not of British descent, despite Australia being one of the most culturally diverse countries in the world. Far from uniting the nation, the Australian flag is divisive. While the colonialism the flag represents is a key part of our history, it's not exactly something we can be proud of. Under colonialism, the indigenous people of Australia who had lived on the continent for tens of thousands of years were forced from their lands, massacred, or subsequently had their children stolen from them in the most horrific chapter of Australian history. It is difficult to see how a colonial flag can be seen as worthy of respect by anyone alive today of indigenous descent. Combine this with Australia's white Australia policy, which persisted well into the 20th century and was still very much in force when the current Australian flag was officially adopted, and it becomes difficult to disentangle notions of racial and cultural superiority from the flag itself. It is sadly no coincidence that even today some of the most prominent informal displays of the Australian flag seldom fail to coincide with hostility towards those who are not of Caucasian descent. The Australian flag is not a racist symbol, but the fact that the flag has and continues to be used to incite division among Australians should be enough evidence for anyone that the flag urgently needs to be changed. It's very easy to forget just how important symbols like national flags are in defining our sense of belonging and the values we hold. The Australian flag must be reclaimed. Not only is the flag outdated and inaccurate, but it is a symbol which Australians alive today cannot all equally accept as truly representing them. A redesign of the Australian flag is long overdue. What should a new Australian flag look like? Simply removing the Union Jack from the flag leaves it looking pretty empty. Many alternative Australian flag designs reposition, resize or recolour the stars of the flag, often making use of green and gold, Australia's national colours. But while these designs are encouraging adaptations, they do not add any new meaning to the Australian flag. They are simply stylized versions of the current flag, which do nothing to change how the flag represents our history or our nation's identity. Other alternative designs add new shapes, patterns or devices to the flag, but most of these are simply decorative, without clear meaning or purpose, and do not make the flag particularly unique. Even the Southern Cross, one of the most enduring Australian symbols, is not unique to the Australian flag. And our flag is certainly not the only one with stars. If we do remove the Union Jack, what then would make Australia's flag stand out? One of the most frequently suggested proposals for a new Australian flag is one which simply replaces the Union Jack with the Australian Aboriginal flag. For many people, this idea makes perfect sense. It acknowledges the indigenous people of mainland Australia while drawing on colours and symbols which are as much a representation of the Australian landscape as they are of its first people. 
This idea seems to come so naturally to the minds of Australians that the flag design persistently re-emerges in popular culture, such as in the science fiction film Event Horizon, as the flag of a future Australia supposedly in the year 2047. But despite its seeming popularity, this flag design is actually very problematic. Any flag which follows the Canton rule, by definition, is a symbol of domination and hierarchy, evoking conflict rather than cohesion and unity. In this case, the flag would imply subordination of Australia to the Aboriginal people instead of Britain. While this is possibly more politically correct, this simply transfers old imperial power from one flag to another rather than creating a new one. Worse still, such a flag could easily be seen as a literal attempt to erase our British colonial history and substitute it with an alternate history which ultimately does not reflect the reality of Australia today. Most importantly, the Aboriginal flag and the Union Jack are independent flags, but in its current form, the Australian flag cannot exist without its canton. Simply changing the canton to something else would effectively mean Australia would still not have a flag of its own. A new Australian flag needs to recognise all Australians, including Indigenous Australians. But this must be done in a way that does not contribute to the very same tensions that a redesigned flag should attempt to resolve. But a national flag not only needs to represent its citizens, the citizens also need to accept the flag in return. At this point, it is worth discussing the result of the recent New Zealand flag referendum. The flag of New Zealand is virtually identical to the Australian flag, and the referendum to replace the flag in 2016 was as much about symbolic independence from Australia as it was from Britain. The five designs put to the New Zealand people included two highly reductive designs and three designs depicting a fern leaf, an important floral symbol of New Zealand. Two of these designs, which were identical except for their car scheme, contained the red Southern Cross from the current New Zealand flag. It is particularly telling that when the time came to vote, the overwhelming majority of New Zealanders voted for the two flag designs containing the Southern Cross, with the vote evenly split between the two colour variations. This suggests that preserving as much of the flag's original design as possible took precedence over any other design considerations. Furthermore, despite there being good reason for the national flag to be changed, the final result of the referendum was that New Zealand chose to keep its original colonial flag design. Despite the referendum being badly managed, poorly timed and inseparable from domestic politics, this result should give us pause for thought when considering a new alternative Australian flag. Australians and New Zealanders both hold great pride in their national flags, regardless of the inadequacies they may have, as do the citizens of any other nation. Changing any flag means that the old flag and all the meaning and purpose it carries will inevitably be made redundant. Any alternative flag therefore needs to be designed with an awareness of what it is replacing. After all, the only way for a majority of citizens to accept a new national symbol as their own is if it can be recognised as such from the outset. Designing a flag is not as straightforward as you might think. A flag needs to be simple, simple enough so that a child can draw it from memory. The best flag designs use large fields of colour, regular shapes and a reduced colour palette. This ensures that the flag is easy to identify when it is in motion, when still, when seen from a distance, when small, and when it is readapted for another purpose. Most importantly, flags need to be unique and distinguishable from one another, particularly when they are flown together. Flags must be easy to manufacture en masse. The best flags are those whose design can be concisely explained by word of mouth. In other words, their design can be broken down into a series of simple geometric components, which allows the flag to be precisely replicated by anyone provided they simply follow a set of instructions. A flag needs to have meaningful symbolism. Every colour, shape and division of space in a flag needs to clearly mean something. If the meaning of any aspect of a flag is left undefined, then it risks being wrongly interpreted, creating confusion and disunity. The symbolism of the flag must accurately represent both the nation and its people and evoke meaning that is not overly specific or too generic. Introducing the Triple Union Flag A simple yet unique flag design which preserves the most distinctive aspects of the current Australian flag while giving it powerful new symbolism and meaning. Much like the Union Jack, the Triple Union Flag is a stylized fusion of three key flags – the Australian Aboriginal Flag, the Australian Red Ensign and the Australian Blue Ensign. But the flag also draws on elements from the National Colonial Flag, the Eureka Flag and the Torres Strait Islander Flag. While many alternative Australian flag designs already exist, 
The Triple Union flag was created with one very specific intention – to create a new Australian flag by making as few changes to the original design as possible. You only need to follow six steps. 1. Replace the Union Jack in the canton with a black rectangle. 2. Change the dark navy blue field to a bright blue so that it better contrasts with the black. 3. Change the colour of the lower quarter of the flag on the hoist side to red. 4. Place a gold circle with a diameter one quarter of the flag's height in the centre of the black rectangle. 5. Add an extra point to the large Commonwealth star to create a regular eight-pointed star in the centre of the red rectangle. And finally, rotate the edge of the black and red rectangles in the centre of the flag inwards towards the mast by 30 degrees so that all lines converge at a point three-sevenths of the width of the flag from the mast. And there you have it, the Triple Union flag. So what is it about this design that makes it a fitting replacement for the current Australian flag? The Triple Union flag is first and foremost about the people of Australia. The three coloured sectors created by evenly dividing the flag's area each represent a different group of people who have made Australia what it is today. The custodians, the indigenous people of Australia and their descendants, the colonists, the first new arrivals to Australia from Britain and the outside world, and the compatriots, those Australians who since Federation have been born and have come from nations all around the world to now call Australia their home. The flag does not have a canton. Instead, each of the sectors converge at a single point at an angle of 120 degrees to each other, representing unity and equality. The positioning of the sectors in the flag is no longer about imperial power, but about our history. Following an anti-clockwise rotation from the top of the flag tells the story of our nation, revealing its ancient legacy as indigenous land, its existence under colonial rule by Britain, and finally, its unique, diverse and modern identity. While the Triple Union flag clearly draws from the design of the Aboriginal flag, the two flags are still distinct and independent from one another, allowing them to be flown separately or together depending on the context. Much like how the flags of England and the Union Jack are still flown independently today, and unlike the current flag which is almost indistinguishable when flown alongside other colonial flags. The most important aspect of both the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander flags is the colour black, which is used to represent the people. The Triple Union flag uses this colour, as well as the gold circle from the Aboriginal flag, symbolising the sun, to represent Indigenous people as a whole. The sun, distinct from the stars in the other sectors, reflects that while all of us are Australian, only the Indigenous people remain and always will be the first Australian people. The red sector, containing a large eight-pointed star, represents Australia's British colonial history. The red colour is drawn from two flags of historical significance, the National Colonial Flag and the Australian Red Ensign. The National Colonial Flag was the earliest known unique flag of Australia, designed in the 1820s. This flag, which was the first to use four stars to represent the Southern Cross, quickly became a recognised symbol for the nation and served as the inspiration for many other Australian flags to come. When Australia became a federated nation in 1901, the official flag of Australia became this defaced British ensign, the winner of a national flag design competition. A revised version was subsequently approved in 1908, the flag currently in use today. However, the familiar blue ensign was originally reserved for federal government use only. Before 1954, it was in fact the red ensign which by law was the only flag state governments, or anyone else for that matter, was allowed to fly freely both on land and at sea. As such, it was the red ensign which was the flag the first Australian citizens lived under and identified with. And on the battlefields of the world wars, it was the red ensign which was the symbol of Australia's armed forces abroad. The colour red is therefore an important symbol of both our British colonial history and the formation of our modern national identity. The current Australian flag contains a large seven-pointed Commonwealth star, which represents the six Australian states with an extra point for Australia's territories. Within the red sector of the Triple Union flag, the Commonwealth star is replaced with an eight-pointed star. This serves as a historical reference to the stars in the original colonial flag, as well as those in the Eureka flag, a symbol of rebellion against colonial authority during the Victorian gold rush of the 1850s, considered by many to be a seminal moment in Australian history. The eight points are also reminiscent of the eight lines of the Union Jack and the eight points of a compass. This is a subtle reference to the importance of nautical navigation in the European discovery of Australia. 
Adapting the star's current meaning, the extra point differentiates between Australia's internal territories, those adjacent to the other states such as the Northern Territory, and the external territories such as the Coral Sea Islands and Norfolk Island. But given that it is very likely that the Northern Territory will achieve independent statehood in the not-so-distant future, the addition of another point to the Commonwealth star may well be inevitable, regardless of whether the Australian flag is deliberately redesigned or not. The star of the Triple Union flag therefore accommodates for this likely future complication. But while the Triple Union flag seeks to be a symbol of unity, it also embodies a much darker message about our past. The black and red sectors of the flag correspond to those in the Aboriginal flag, where the red colour is used to represent the land. In the Triple Union flag, the sun is forced from the land into the black sector, displaced by the eight-pointed star representing British colonists. The implied meaning of this is not meant to be subtle. The Triple Union flag recognises that no matter how much we might try to sugarcoat it, Australians are and always will be living on stolen land. The first step towards true reconciliation is the recognition and acknowledgement of our history, and there is arguably no better way to achieve such recognition than by making this history part of the symbol of the nation itself. While the red and black sectors of the Triple Union flag represent the legacy of our past, the blue sector represents the present and our future. The blue sector contains the stars of the Southern Cross from the current Australian flag against a bright blue background and represents all those who have been born or migrated to Australia since the nation's federation. Here, the bright blue represents the ocean that all new arrivals to Australia have had to travel across. The stars of the cross are also given new meaning. The seven points of the four large Commonwealth stars can be seen as representing the seven continents, with the five points of the small star representing the five oceans, symbolising the diversity of nations to which Australians can trace their heritage. The five-pointed star is also seen in the Torres Strait Islander flag, where it similarly serves to represent seafaring navigation. As a prominent constellation in the southern night sky, the Southern Cross is a symbol which represents our special place in the world and our shared identity as Australians. As well as representing the people, the Triple Union flag is also a vivid illustration of the place of Australia, depicting the most iconic features of the Australian landscape. The oceans which surround the continent, the vast deserts of the Red Centre and the landmark of Uluru. The ash and charcoal remains of the bushfires which shape the Australian landscape and the sun which drives Australia's volatile climate. When one reads the iconic Australian poem My Country by Dorothea McKellar, the symbolism of the flag becomes clear. I love a sunburnt country, a land of sweeping plains, of ragged mountain ranges, of droughts and flooding rains. I love her far horizons. I love her jewel sea, her beauty and her terror. The wide brown land for me. The Triple Union flag redefines and reclaims the Australian flag. It is a flag that we can finally call our own. A flag which tells the story of all Australians. Who we are, where we come from and what we stand for. From a practical design perspective, several features make the Triple Union flag a highly functional alternative flag design. While the flag preserves the 1 by 2 proportions of the current flag, the symbols in the flag sit freely within each of the coloured sectors. This allows the proportions of the flag to be easily shifted without distorting the flag's core design features. This is important because flags frequently have their proportions changed such as at the Olympic Games or the United Nations, where national flags are standardised to either 3x5 or 2x3. This gives the Triple Union flag an advantage over both the current flag and other alternative flags, which can only change their proportions by distorting their design and have no clear protocol for how the problem of resizing should be resolved. The flag remains recognisable when depicted in grayscale and can be communicated using plain text. The flag does not conform to the design conventions of any other national flag. It would be the only national flag to use diagonal lines pointing towards the mast in a swallowtail pattern instead of away from it. When flown among the flags of other nations, the Triple Union flag can be easily recognised without looking out of place or being confused with the flag of another nation, making it perfect for an international context. One question remains. If the Triple Union flag did become the national flag, what would happen to the other flags of Australia?
such as those of the states and the maritime and aviation flags, which right now are simply versions of the current flag. The Australian flag has a very specific purpose as the symbol of the nation. Nothing more, nothing less. Attempting to adapt the Triple Union flag's design for use in the state flags, as has been suggested by other flag designers, would trivialise much of the Triple Union flag's intended meaning and make identification of the real national flag unnecessarily confusing. But continuing to use British colonial flags to represent the Australian states is just as problematic as it is for the nation as a whole and does little to acknowledge the state's independent and distinct identities. Therefore, each of the states should set out to create their own unique flags, as distinct from each other as they are from the national flag, regardless of whether the Australian flag changes or not. The aviation and maritime flags of Australia, however, require greater consideration. These flags are technically national flags, denoting the country of origin of ships and aircraft. It is therefore appropriate that these flags should more closely resemble the national flag. The large eight-pointed star in the Triple Union flag is reminiscent of a compass and the downward-facing line can be seen as pointing towards the ocean. Likewise, the circle of the flag represents the sun, with the upward-pointing line pointing towards the sky. These symbols can be used to form the basis of the maritime and aviation flags respectively. The Royal Australian Air Force Roundel nicely substitutes for the circle from the main flag, while the eight-pointed star can be stylized to more closely resemble a compass. These symbols allow new aviation and maritime flags to be derived as follows. Take the design of the current Australian flag and remove the Union Jack and Commonwealth Star. Place the compass or roundel with a diameter of three-fifths of the height of the flag, two-sevenths of the width of the flag from the mast on the midline. Draw a vertical line through the centre of each symbol and rotate the line and symbol together by 30 degrees in opposite directions so the diagonal line connects two points, one-seventh and three-sevenths of the width of the flag from the mast. Finally, colour the flags according to their traditional styles, with the civil variants both being red and the Navy and Air Force flags being blue. The result is a set of flags which clearly represent their respective uses as well as their relationship to each other. The flags are themselves unique but can still be recognised as having a meaningful association with the national flag's design. Most importantly, the flags have clear functionality with the darker colour in each of the flags inverted between its opposing civil and military flag, allowing for easy identification and differentiation. One day, the Australian flag will be changed. None of us know exactly when this will occur, but we can be virtually certain that it will happen, and it will probably happen much sooner than we expect. Perhaps Australia will finally become a republic and cut all official ties with a nation on the opposite side of the planet. Or perhaps the United Kingdom itself will disband, forcing the nation to change its own flag, which would require us to do the same. Maybe unforeseen events of national or international significance will force the necessity of changing the flag upon us. Or maybe nothing much will change at all. But what we can be sure of is that this year alone, over 300,000 new Australian citizens will be born. New Australians who will surely one day look at the Australian flag and think, why haven't we got our own one yet? All it takes is one particularly audacious Prime Minister to ask that same question, and before we know it, we will be the ones answering it. And not around the dinner table, but at the ballot box. That's why we need to be asking ourselves that same question today. Now is the time for us to be having an open and frank discussion about what the new Australian flag should be, so that, not if, but when the time comes for us to make a decision, we can be sure that our choice is justified and everyone has a chance to form their own perspective on this issue. Please share this video with your friends and family so that it can reach as many people as possible. We might end up making Australia just a little bit better. For more information about the Triple Union flag, please visit our dedicated web space, 